The U.S. is one step closer to avoiding a devastating debt default that could cripple the economy. Yesterday, the Senate voted to raise the debt limit by $480 billion through December. The House is expected to vote on the measure next week. Meanwhile, President Biden continues his push to get more Americans vaccinated against COVID, appealing to private companies to mandate vaccinations for employees. So Ed O'Keefe is following all of this from outside of the White House. Ed, very good to see you. Um, so listen, we want to know how this all went down and, and why it went down the way it did. Uh, if uh, lawmakers, though, will have to use the next uh, few months to address the debt ceiling long term, they will be in the same situation in December if they can't figure things out over the next couple of months. But I'm really sort of curious about the number that they sort of landed on and why it was $480 million more. How did they determine that that was the price tag? That was part of what held up uh, passage of this as early as Wednesday night, is that they were actually asking mm -hmm. the Treasury Department, could you please run the numbers and figure out how much more money we need to pay for things through early December if we can get it to that length of time. And so the Treasury Department came back and said, 480 billion between friends should be enough. Um, and so uh, here we are. That uh, <laughs> will take them by some estimates either to early December, some say as long as right into the new year. Uh, but either way, it doesn't give them much wiggle room and they're going to have to sort this out just before Christmas. Uh, the deal now means that you also have not only the debt limit fight, but also the fight over extending government funding and keeping the lights on to be held right there. In the, at the end of that first full week after Thanksgiving, which gives Congress two big tent poles to work towards uh, as they also try to figure out how to spend about, you know, anywhere from $1.5 to $3.5 trillion on the president's Build Back Better agenda as they continue squabbling over the price. Right. right. So can we talk about that, the Build Back Better sure. agenda and just where things stand, where are lawmakers in getting the infrastructure and, and social spending bills passed? They're still working on it. Uh, you heard Pramila Jayapal here on mm -hmm. CBSN yesterday saying that they're not urging, the progressives at least, are telling the president, don't commit to a firm price tag. We can still sort this out. Um, and, and progressives like her continuing to push the moderates like Joe Manchin to say, name your price, give us specifically what it is you'd like to do so that we can sort of start negotiating over the finer details and the ultimate price. Uh, Joe Manchin also had another meeting here at the White House yesterday with the president before he went to Chicago to try to talk through the details. We haven't heard much about how that meeting went, but the more he talks directly with the president, the closer we probably get to knowing what exactly he's comfortable with. He and, we should say, about three dozen moderates in the Senate and, and in the House who are important votes anytime you've got the two chambers divided as closely as they are. Uh, so uh, we'll see if we hear anything more through the weekend. The problem with Congress these days, Anne-Marie, is they're like high schoolers and college kids. Yes. They, 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 they work far better within the 48-hour window before their big deadline. Uh, but when given time, <laughs> when given time, things kind of meander. And so it's going to be harder to know the real progress of this stuff unless the president's putting people in the room together, butting heads and saying, please sort this out because we don't have much time. Did, did we know each other in college? Because that, that does sound very familiar when I think about my college days. At least it's we, we better can, than we, we could, they're like preschoolers. We could, we could add journalists to that list too. I mean, we all work better under tight deadlines, <laughs> I suppose. Indeed. Um, so while delivering remarks on COVID vaccinations at a construction site outside of Chicago yesterday, uh, Biden said that the rule that he announced last month mandating companies with at least 100 employees to require vaccinations would be put in place quickly. But officials say it's still going to take several weeks. Why is that? It's a good question. And it's what we keep asking. Uh, you know, he announced this last month, right, or late August that this was coming. And OSHA, the uh, Occupational Safety and Hazard Agency, uh, the one that sets workplace rules, still hasn't coughed up the final ruling. Uh, that's partly because federal rulemaking, whatever it is, uh, does require some time. You've got you to let things work through the system and get reviewed, and there has to be public comment period uh, before it gets finalized and then issued. And even then, you're going to have at least two dozen Republican-led states challenging this in court. Uh, because why not, right? I mean, there's obvious concern in those states that a federal mandate isn't needed, uh, but also it's just the politics of the thing, that there always seems to be some disagreement that ends up in court. So, you know, that's why he's out there yesterday going to this construction company outside Chicago, big employer in the Midwest, and saying, it's great to hear that you guys are going to do this. We need more 
of the private sector to do what the government has done, mandate the vaccine or at least require stringent testing of employees so that we can help drive down the rate of the unvaccinated in this country. They put out a report here at the White House yesterday that had shown that late summer there were about 95 million unvaccinated Americans and the numbers come down to about 67 million just in the last few weeks since the federal mandate and the employer mandates began. They argue the more of that we see, the more that number will go down, the more people will get their shots, the fewer cases there will be, and then we can move on. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, before I let you go, I want to ask you a quick question about the administration's strategy towards China. The CIA director has announced that the agency is establishing a major organization focused on expanding and coordinating intelligence gathering um, to, against China or about China. What does this mean for U.S.-China relations? That's right. We should hat tip our colleague Olivia Gazes, who follows uh, the intelligence community, who helped break this story yesterday. Uh, what essentially this does mm. is it, for the first time now, has the CIA focused in on a single country, and they're going to build entire teams all around the world monitoring every aspect of Chinese society and how it's trying to infiltrate the United States and the rest of the Western world. They haven't done this since the USSR was in existence back into the late 1980s. Uh, but there's a good understanding across parties and among all intelligence experts that there needs to be a renewed and a constant focus on China. Uh, you talk to people here at the White House, they get jazzed up about China no matter what the issue is. And in the intelligence community, they understand it's a necessity as well. They say it's harder to infiltrate this country given that the Chinese economy is so intertwined with the American economy. And they're launching a new push to recruit people who speak Mandarin uh, to, to work for the CIA. A big understanding and reorganization that I noted yesterday. Uh, I saw a bunch of Republican national security foreign policy folks who said this is a very good and overdue idea. Yeah, I find it actually quite fascinating, especially when I consider, you know, what we know about China and how little information they gave the rest of the world as right. the pandemic was starting to spread and take hold. It was very difficult to get their cooperation. And that's just in one sort of area. Um, so I find this truly, truly very interesting. Um, Ed, thank you so much. You have yourself a good weekend, Anne-Marie. You too. All right.